back at the MCG tomorrow with crowds. How exciting is that? Yeah, pretty exciting. I think you could see from last night the crowds are quite into the game. And um, I don't know if uh, the coverage turned the crowd noise up or something, but it was definitely louder. Um, than what I've experienced before. So uh, looking forward to getting back out there and uh, it's great for the fans. I'm sure that there was a lot of excited people last night, but equally as excited for this weekend and going forward. So you watched last night's game. I'm just wondering, what did you make of it in terms of the players? They looked quite gassed. <laughs> I think that's uh, pretty common in round one, but um, yeah, you could see the game was much quicker um, than probably what it was last year. Um, not sure if that's the new standard the mark rule or anything like that but um, I think that you find most years round one's uh, pretty fast and then slowly as fatigue kicks in as you saw uh, um, throughout the season it does um, tend to slow down a little bit but uh, small sample size was pretty quick out there. And just in terms of the interchange being cut, have you been told as a defender that you're going to have less time to come off? Yeah, I don't really get a rest anyway. Berjo doesn't uh, take me off too often so but I think that yeah as you yeah, you know, there's obviously only, I think it's 75 interchanges this year. I'm not sure how much it's going to affect it. I think that um, we weren't really a club last year that got close to 90 a hell of a lot. But um, yeah, I think you can see that um, if there is a guy that needs a rest and he, he doesn't have a rotation, it's obviously going to be uh, much harder for him to stay out there. So, um, but for us, I think that we haven't really spoke about it too much. It's probably more the mids and the forwards that get the rest. and us defenders kind of hang out there um, and stay on the ground. And the one official practice match, what was the yeah. takeaway from that against the Dogs? Yes, yeah, so obviously we played Richmond the week before, but then in the um, the Amy Community Series, I think it's called this time, um, they, uh, yeah, we play, played the Bulldogs. Obviously it wasn't our best game um, by a long shot. We were really happy with how we performed against Richmond the week before. And then um, I think the, the big theme for us has been consistency. And I know that um, a lot of players that have been doing media and our coaches um, lately have been speaking about that because it has been, been a bit of a theme for us this pre-season with our um, disappointing consistency over probably the past, the previous two years. Um, for us it was really disappointing but uh, we learnt a lot from that. Uh, we've, we've taken it into account this week at training. We got to train it for two weeks and we're looking forward to coming out Saturday and showing really what we can uh, put our best foot forward. Partner in crime down back, Stephen May. I think tomorrow is stage 12 in terms of that mandatory concussion yep. layoff. How's he travelling? Yeah, I don't really know if he's concussed all the time or this is just normal <laughs> Stephen May. But uh, yeah, no, nah, I think look, he's he's done all the all the things that he's required to at this stage. Um, I'm pretty sure that he'd have to tick off a couple of things today and then even tomorrow. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having him out there. So hopefully he is. The Dockers are glad that Nat Five probably going to play forward more at times this year. Yeah. I mean, what challenges does that present for you? Well, I think that uh, yeah, he's obviously a fantastic player, but um, hopefully our system really uh, holds up against that. And uh, I'm sure that you'll see a number of players play on that. And um, when a midfielder goes forward, it's generally um, right down the back, deep forward. So um, whoever's playing that last line of defence will, sure, will surely take him. And um, yeah, but he's a fantastic player. But Equally, I think they've got some really good young guys coming through their midfield as well that will probably come forward. And obviously they've got uh, a pretty good forward line as well. You know, obviously Matt Tabiner had a fantastic year last year. So um, as a defensive group, we're really looking forward to the challenge because we know that, uh, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're a pretty good side. And it's not often that a new rule is brought in a couple of days before round one. Has there been much talk amongst the playing group about, you know, the medical sub and how it's going to be handled? Uh, Probably not too much within the playing group because I think the day that it got announced we were at main training and then we kind of went home and then yesterday was our day off but um, yeah it would be interesting to see who is the sub um, and, and just what type of role they can play. Um, a former teammate played it last night in Oscar McDonald who um, the first five minutes of the game once he came on he couldn't get away from the ball so um, I think that they'll probably have to be real versatile in my opinion I think that um, the thing for the medical sub is anyone can get injured and, and be ruled out of the game. So I think it's someone that's going to have to be really versatile and come on. But you can see what impact they can make. And um, yeah, I think that uh, I think it's good. It's a good rule because um, when a player does go down, um, whether that be the, the doctor ruling them out or anything like that, it is sometimes hard to keep fresh legs and those rotations obviously less now um, it might be harder. So it's a really good rule, I think. 
<laughs> Jimmy Jordan, yes. Uh, I think that within the four walls, we've been able to see what Jimmy's uh, been able to do over his first two years. Last year was super stiff, um, hurt himself, uh, hurt his finger in a gym accident, probably right on the brink of when he was really uh, close to playing last year. So we've been able to see what he's been able to produce at VFL level and obviously at training uh, most days. But to get his opportunity this year, I think he's taken it to another level this preseason. Um, but equally, you know, Jimmy's been a great performer this preseason. But you know, you talk about guys like Tommy Sparrow, who's his partner in crime, they're best mates, they live together. Um, they do everything together. And then we've obviously got Cozzy, uh, Luke Jackson, Trent Rivers, um, Kay Chandler, <laughs> some pretty exciting names, uh, you know, especially in our four walls um, at the footy club that we're super excited about, but I can't wait to see Jimmy play on Saturday. Round one is just four points, like any other game. But there's lots of expectations on Melbourne this year, and you said, you know, the last two years have been yeah. disappointing. How important is it to get that win? Oh, look, I think that, um, yeah, you speak about what I spoke about before in terms of our consistency. That's what we want to provide, and whether it's a, a win or a loss, I think that the main thing that we want to get out of it is that we play the Melbourne way and the fans and the coaches and our families are proud of us the way that we play. Um, obviously winning, that's the caper. If you don't win, you end up uh, you know, out of a job or you know, there's obviously really harsh um, criticism on you or anything like that. But for us, um, we just want to work on the things that we've come out in pre-season to do. And I think that if we do do that, we're going to get the win. So. Um, for us, we're excited about playing round one, but we understand that it's going to be a huge roller coaster. I think you've seen in the past two or three years, the AFL season, if you don't come 100% uh, every week, you get rolled by teams that are lower than you on the ladder or you know, vice versa. So I think that um, for us, we're really looking forward to putting that on show, not only this week, but going ahead.